Hello Internet and welcome to a new tutorial. Lunarev once told me to make the best side trans kick, you need bassism, V1. And me being fond of kick 2, I thought to myself, okay, this guy has been making side trans for 20 years, here's a relic by now. But then Bitwig released version 5.3 of their software and it included a new kick device. Suddenly his words made a lot of sense. So his idea, less is more. The purer and simplest the source sound is, the better it'll sound on a big sound system. And this new kick device is the living proof of his idea. Let's take a look at it. First of all, we only have six knobs in here and two buttons. We have tuning knob in here for your fundamental frequency release, basically release of the kick. Gate when on, the kick is going to sustain as long as we're playing a MIDI note. Zap is pitch modulation amount, zap decay, pitch modulation decay basically, velocity sensitivity, I don't need to explain that, and the main output in here. Pretty straightforward. Now, what we're going to do today is recreate my trusty kick. I've been using this kick for over a year and a half now. I've tested it on stage in my music and also in other artists' music like Inside Out and Borderliners. And I think that recreating an existing kick will give us a clear benchmark of how good this device is. Does it have the necessary workflow or not? And also it's going to limit us by giving us a clear goal. So basically we won't spend time tweaking knobs endlessly, right? The kick we're going to recreate Today sounds like this. Right, and as you can see, I've already set a spectrum device in here and an oscilloscope, so we can see exactly what's going on. In the reference device, the reference kick will be in orange and the new kick will be in blue, but vice versa for the oscilloscope, we will have the reference in blue and the new one in orange. I don't know why they took this decision, but they are inverted. Basically, they look like this. All right, now. Let's take our new kick, sounds like this for now. The first thing we're going to do is set the fundamental frequency of our kick. And as with everything Bitwig, you can control or command click on the knob and just type in the note of your fundamental frequency, let's say F0, and it's going to automatically set the correct frequency. But if you're like me and you like to live dangerously, you can take the tuning in here and set it to 30 hertz. The reference kick fundamental frequency is actually 30 hertz. As for the release, I'm going to set it to a small value, maybe like 30 hertz, something like that. That. So now we have this. Okay, for the zap, maybe somewhere about in here. Yeah, this will give us a really nice starting point and the decay. Let's keep it like this for now. And I don't need any velocity sensitivity. Now, as you can hear, the kick is super clicky. So let's get rid of that. For that, let's add an EQ in here. I'll go with EQ plus, and I'll set the resolution in here to huge, by the way. To get rid of the clickiness, really simple, a low pass filter. I'll set it to low pass four, just like so, and about nine kilohertz, somewhere in here, right? So now we have this. Pretty cool. And as you can see, let's uh, take our oscilloscope in here, let's freeze it. As you can see, the reference kick has a neck in here. This neck is the lower mids region. And actually by taking them off, it will give the kick its plasticky feeling. So let's just do so. I'll take a bell shape in here. Uh, let's set it to about uh, 400 Hertz, something like this. Let's, let's take it down. Let's hear what we have. So without the bell, with the bell, so we give it a really nice feeling. Maybe broaden the shape a little bit like this. So before the EQ, after we have this. Okay, now if you keep looking at the original kick, oh, by the way, I kept it freezed. So let's unfreeze it. Now we have this basically. Let's turn off the reference kick. See, we've created this little uh, neck. Let's give back the reference kick and uh, let's freeze it again. As you can see, the reference kick's transient is way lower in volume than the rest of the body. 
And one way to give our new kick this uh, same characteristic is by actually boosting the lower frequencies. And one way to do it is by using equalizer called Sculpt. Now, Sculpt is an analog emulation. So basically, it's going to give us some analog warmth, bro. And this is something not that bad because it'll give some character to our kick. Now, what I'm going to do in here, first of all, unfreeze the oscilloscope. I'm going to take the low shelf in here. I'll set it to 30 hertz, right? And I'm going to to give it a little bit of boost but not that much like maybe nine percent check this out now we have this let's take off the reference kick and to give it a bit more character what i'm going to do in here is choose the tube coloring algorithm without it we had this if you enjoyed this content, consider leaving a like, comment, and subscribe, maybe becoming a super fan. And if you want to dive deeper into Satra's production and sound design, check out my preset packs and master classes, links down in the description. Now, back to the tutorial. As you can see, the Sculpt device gave us the body we're looking for, but it gave us also some of the punchiness of the kick back. And also this kick can use a little bit of face shift to align with the reference kick. Now, I can't think of a better way to achieve these two results rather by using a multi-band device, right? It's not the best way to do it. It's kind of a cheat code, but in the case of this kick, it works wonders. So check this out. We will take a multi-band effect in here. And as I mentioned, the punchiness of the kick is in the lower mids. So we're going to set the lower crossover to about 130 hertz, somewhere around there, and the higher crossover somewhere about 800 hertz. So we'll have this basically. Check this out. First of all, we've created the phase shift we're looking for. And now if I'll take the mids volume down, we will sculpt the neck and basically the punchiness of the kick and give it this plasticky feeling I'm looking for. Check this out. Without. Okay, now let's compare it to the original kick. So we had this. The new kick. See, we have some differences in the high end, but we can just change the EQ in here and get that back. But I think we still need to focus more on those lower mids, right? So I'm going to add an EQ plus in here and I'm going to draw a bell shape like this, but like really narrow. Yeah, I'm going to go about maybe 200 hertz. Like this. So before we had this. And after we have this. The punchiness and the plasticky feeling it gave to the kick. So the original sounds like this. The new one. We are pretty close. I still think we need to sculpt the uh, zap decay and the release a little bit just to match them with the original kick. Right, the original sounded like this. New one. At this point, I think both kicks sounds really close one to another. And of course, I can spend more time tweaking these knobs in here to get them to sound exactly the same, but that's not the point. What I'm trying to show you in here is how good the Zap Kick device is and how straight to the point it is. I'm not saying that Kick 2 is a bad synth. I actually still love it. But a device like Zap Kick will save me a lot of time tweaking knobs endlessly while giving me exactly the same results. And this sums up today's tutorial. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, or maybe become a super fan. If you'd like to get all of the presets I make in these tutorials alongside some exclusive content, consider becoming a Patreon. And if you want to dive deeper into Psytrance production and sound design, check out my preset packs and masterclasses. Links down in the description. And with this, I'll see you in the next one.